We are in no man's land. Honestly, until we get to either 9,500 or 10,500, we're doing little of anything beyond collecting those dividends and we'll be getting, that we'll be getting all summer. Today is just another reminder that buying on big ripping days like the up 200 on Wednesday has been a recipe for disaster. Once we get by options expiration in a couple of weeks, we'll be eyeing our levels and looking to collect some more premium by selling calls again. The market is not healthy. But we remain optimistic about July through the rest of the year. Statistically speaking, we see two corrections a year once the bull market starts, after the bear market like we had in 2007 into 2009. Plus, we've talked about sell in May all through the month of April and we're set up in April to profit from the downside by owning puts. All of that's worked out well. Now that we're in June, we just need to get through options expiration. Then, in July, we're all going to learn the truth. Earnings are going to come out and dispel at least for a month or so whether there or not there's real recovery or whether the market is going up at all this year was a farce. Like Larry Kudlow likes to say, profits are a mother's milk to stock markets. And he's right. When earnings stop being released and the news cycle takes over, we get blasted. We've had nothing but negative news since earnings season, yet the data has actually been very good. No doubt the jobs numbers were heinous this morning. Had we known that consensus was for 600000 we would have done our selling yesterday, as that was a stupid number from whoever released it. We need to assume no better than 400,000 jobs for the rest of the year, period. If we get that, then we should be happy. If we get better, we should be surprised. And if we get less, then we should shrug and move on. You will not see real job growth until at least the back half of 2011, as much of unemployment that remains is structural, not cyclical. That means that something has to change about the economy itself in order to see unemployment come back down around 6%, which we think will be full employment going forward. That's where everyone who wants a job gets one. There will always be unemployment because, let's face it, government programs keep people alive and some people just don't want to work. Then there are all the people who left their job or who forgot, <coughs> who got fired due to performance, breaking some rule, etc. Bottom line, unless we get a government-approved boom of natural gas, then 6% is the new normal. <coughs> the energy sector is the only place for growth right now and the government needs to get off the neck of natural gas producers and give the fuel a thumbs up. Without spending a dime, if they say that, we as a country will be committed to use to the use of natural gas in large vehicles and power plants, you'll see a million new jobs created in 60 days. We know from the biggest players that companies are holding back until they know that the government will not destroy their investment dollars by banning things like hydraulic fracking. So let's hope that the Celtics do a much better job in Game 2 and let's hope that we at least get a big thumbs up from the administration regarding natural gas after this massive BP issue. We'd at least like to see something positive come out of the BP disaster. At least the president finally said the words natural and gas in the same sentence in public and he wasn't making a joke. Now we have to see if he has the moxie to turn away the coal lobby and do what's right for a country by drafting a long-term energy policy that means that the EPA or other government agency will not go after the natural gas drillers for unsubstantiated claims on the safety of horizontal drilling. I think the case against oil and coal should be more than obvious now. How many more people have to die before we start using what's right under our noses to power America? Thanks for, for tuning in today to Lunch at the Markets, and we hear that T. Boone Pickens will be on Mad Money tonight, and we're already long at CHK, CLNE, SC in the natural gas arena, and we all say, well, we'll also say that until we finally start using the, until we finally start using the fuel, Exxon is starting to look really attractive, and so is Total. Both have made huge purchases into natural gas. Both have been annihilated on the back of BP. Both pay a dividend, and both of them are not BP. Take a look at TOT and XOM on today's wicked sell-off, and have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday.